In this video, I would like to consider the following situation. So suppose that we have some sort of ramp like this that's inclined at some angle, and there's a block that is sitting on the ramp. Okay, and the block is at rest, and it's not slipping. All right, well, if the block isn't moving, then we know that it has to be in equilibrium. Uh, and so if we draw a free body diagram for the block, then it's got to look like the following. Well, we know that there's going to be a gravitational force on the block by the Earth. And we know that there's a normal force because there has to be something keeping the block from sliding down the ramp. Um, but the normal force is perpendicular to the ramp. And so it has to be kind of in this direction, normal force on the block by the ramp. That's going to keep the block from moving downward um, in the direction of gravity. But if those were the only two forces, then the block would have a net force and it would be accelerating down the ramp. So the only other force that can be present is friction. And the friction on the block by the ramp is going to look kind of like that. All right, so um, we know that those three forces have to add up to zero because the block is not moving. Okay, but let's say that we tip the ramp up even further. So if I make the ramp be at an even steeper angle, like this, and the block is still at rest, not slipping, we can consider what the new free body diagram needs to look like. Okay, so here the weight has not changed, so gravitational force on the block by the Earth. Um, but normal has changed direction. So normal to the ramp is now going to be at a um, different angle than it was before. Um, and this is going to mean that friction is going to have to be larger than it was before. Okay, so normal force on the block by the ramp, friction force on the block by the ramp. Okay, and to be a little more concrete about exactly how big the normal and friction force are going to be in each case, um, we can take the angle that we have for the, the ramp and we can actually split up our forces in a convenient coordinate system. So I'm going to choose my coordinates to be so that parallel to the ramp is x and perpendicular to the ramp is y. Um, that's often going to be a convenient choice for us to use because um, already two of the forces are in, in those directions. And so we only have to break up one force. There's nothing saying we have to use that coordinate system. We could choose vertical and horizontal. We would just be doing um, more vector decomposition if we did that. Okay, so let's take the gravitational force, GBE, and let's split it up into components that are in the x and y directions. So um, the y direction is going to be down into the ramp like this, and the x part is going to be parallel to the ramp like this. So I'll call this just g um, y, and this one is gx. Okay. Um, and if you do a little bit of geometry, you can convince yourself that the angle here is actually theta, the same angle as the ramp. I'm not going to show that, but I think you can check that on your own. Um, okay. And so um, we can see then that um, gy, which is gbe times cosine theta, and gx, which is gbe sine theta, are going to have to be equal to the other forces that are present. So um, the only other force in the y direction is the normal force. So the magnitude of gy is going to be equal to the magnitude of nbr. And the magnitude of gx is the only other um, force in the x direction. Um, so that's going to be equal to friction, g, or sorry, fbr. Okay, and so as we change the angle, we can see that the normal force and friction force change. Um, and so one of the things that is really important to notice here is that the friction is whatever size it needs to be in order to make the block not move. So friction is whatever size necessary to prevent slipping. Okay, um, and in some cases that might mean that it's zero. So the friction could be zero. If we change the angle of the ramp to zero, then there's no reason why we need to have any friction. Um, or the friction um, could be in an unexpected direction. Um, you cannot always tell which direction the friction will be when you start a problem. So to give you an example of this, suppose that we have a wheel that is uh, moving in some direction and speeding up. Well, if we draw a free body diagram for the wheel, there's going to be a gravitational force on the wheel by the earth and a normal force on the wheel by the road. Um, and there must be another force because the wheel is accelerating to the right. The only force that could possibly be is friction. So we have a friction force on the wheel by the road and the friction force is the same direction the wheel is rolling. So the friction force is actually forward in this case, which is not what you ordinarily expect. Normally you expect friction to be opposing the motion. Here friction is causing the motion. And so, um, you know, you can't always tell ahead of time which direction friction will be. Um, it's whatever direction it needs to be in a certain problem to prevent slipping.